They say the third time is always the charm, and for SpaceX, the third Starship prototype test flight finally was able to land and prove to the world what it was capable of. Even though SN10 was able to land successfully, it still has some major issues that caused an explosion minutes after its landing. Through this video, we're going to tell you why the SN10 exploded and the steps SpaceX is taking to make sure this doesn't happen again. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe for more SpaceX content. Recently, after the failed landing of SN9, SpaceX made a soft landing of its latest Starship prototype, which is a next generation rocket. Although the live webcast commentator called the SN10 landing a successful one, we can all agree that SN11 will definitely require some extra fixes. Following the live stream of the mission, there was a long, silent pause from the SpaceX commentator after the landed SN10 sat on the pad, slightly leaning to one side. Very little fire burnt underneath, and for that moment, everyone thought that the space vehicle would tip over, but it did not. After a couple more minutes, the ship exploded. For the past few years, SpaceX has been working on the new Starship rocket, and we've witnessed it blow up a few times due to certain reasons. With the SN10 crash, we now know a bit about why it tipped and how the company plans to solve the problem with the continuing SN11. SpaceX intends to make the Starship a reusable vehicle, much like the Falcon 9, which allows the vessel the ability to land vertically on the standard launch pad or floating platform. While the SN8 and SN9 prototypes failed the reusability test in a much more dramatic fashion, the SN10 prototype seemed like it was doing fine after it touched down at least until it exploded. Unlike other test flights, this happens to be the single flight that successfully touched down on the landing pad after making a high altitude test, and the third prototype to fly into orbit. As successful as the landing was, Elon Musk himself explained that the landing was a bit more crunchy than expected, and it should have been a soft landing. He tweeted, Impact of 10 meters per second, 22 miles per hour, crush legs, and part of the skirt. Paying attention at this landing of SN10, revealed that it came in narrowly hot and fast, and it seemed to bounce slightly upon touching down. As a matter of fact, the tilted ship stayed a few minutes on the pad before taking an unconfirmed flight into flames. The fuel ended up where it shouldn't have been, and a few minutes after landing, well, that caused the eventual explosion, just like the previous prototypes. Unlike the SN10, which landed safely before crashing, SN8 and SN9 crashed on impact with the launch pad. However, the SpaceX CEO has said that the fuel issue resulted in a low thrust on the landing pad and also caused the leg-crunching touchdown. Elon Musk further mentioned that there will be multiple fixes for SN11, and the company is already working quickly to land softly on the pad. Several images have emerged about SN11 appearing on the launch pad at the Boca Chica facility, and we might be graced with more flying and landing attempts. With SN10, SpaceX nearly perfected its belly flop and vertical landing, flying as high as its successor, the SN9, which covered more than 10 kilometers into orbit. Like the previous test flights, SN10 achieved a targeted altitude of 6 miles, and at intervals, each of these three engines was cut off before reignition after the belly flop. Afterwards, it made its trademark flip maneuver before the vertical landing. The main objective of the launch test was to simply demonstrate the computer-controlled movements of the rocket's four aerodynamic flaps which steer its descent before landing. Apparently, the SN10 prototype was actually traveling slightly too fast before it landed, and at a speed of 10 meters per second, the hard impact damage to the legs and part of the skirt culminated in the explosion. Elon Musk said the SN10 landed hard because it was much likely in low thrust mode, which resulted from helium ingestion from the fuel tank header. A pressurization system was included to SN10 on Musk's order, as compensation for some problems encountered with SN8, and he particularly said that the idea seemed good at the time. At the company's Boca Chica test facility, some SpaceX crew members were seen trifling with the SN11 rocket. The crew members put down each landing leg and tested them appropriately, to make sure they are deployed without any oversight. We very much believe that these landing legs have been reinforced because of the SN10 test. After SN10 completed the first Starship prototype landing, SN11 was rolled out to the launch site for its own attempt. Significant progress is currently being made with the test flights, and based on data gained from SN10, the company might as well tweak the landing sequence and set it as it should be. Interestingly, the SN11 might not even be the last prototype to perfect everything, and as such, the company at this moment stacks up parts for up to SN20 at the production site. 
With interest, the SN10 addressed the key objectives which had been successfully undertaken by SN8 and SN9, including ascent profile, stable return, utilizing the aero services, and Raptor performance. The Starship prototype SN10 still went ahead by actually touching down on the landing pad in one piece. The successful landing was achieved in part by the refined relight process for the Raptor engines as they each easily ignited before the flip maneuver. This refinement was to allay the issues suffered by SN9, where the one Raptor engine failed to relight and then caused the vehicle to falter after completing the vertical flip. The SN10 flip was successful, with all three Raptors lighting and the maneuver was completed in no time, unlike the previous test flight. Unfortunately, what could be easily assumed as the intermediate deselection of the one Raptor that has the least lever arm was not achieved, with the three Raptor engines remained firing for the entire flip before two of the engines shut down immediately as Starship SN10 came down for the vertical touchdown on one single engine. Although the SN10 appeared to be heading for a smooth landing, some of the landing legs did not lock into place during their deployment, and this caused the vehicle to tilt on its landing. It was further stated that the landing burn caused the explosion, and the company's Elon Musk stated that thrust was low despite being commanded high for reasons unknown at present, hence hard touchdown. We've never seen this before. Had all the legs locked into place, they still would not have protected SN10 from a hard landing, Musk further said. This was way past leg loads. They got squashed hard. Regardless of how the landing occurred, the SN10 test was still the first Starship prototype to make it back to the pad in one piece. The challenge then for SN11 will be on completing the milestone through to landing, and further refinement of the landing burn process might as well guard against a hard touchdown. Elon pointed out, next time, minimum two engines all the way to the ground and restart engine three if engine one or two have issues. The companies reduced the amount of time between rollout and launch with each of the Starship prototypes already prepared and ready for launch and upgrades are ready. And if the SN11's preliminary schedule is followed, that pad flow record will be broken once more. Immediately after the SN10 flight, a rollout revealed the company setting up the SN11, with all three Raptors already in place. Within a few days from now, SN11 will go through a proof testing and then later a static fire test, following the explosion of SN10. If all goes to plan, the static fire test goes successfully, well, then the SN11 will be ready for launch. Fortunately, SN11 will be the last vehicle of the current Starship prototype versions. The next vehicles will come with other developments, which Elon Musk hinted at a while back. These modifications are currently unknown. However, what is really recognized is that the SN11 will be programmed to easily land and further sustain compared to its predecessors. SpaceX plans to make the Starship its primary rocket in the future, carrying out specific roles like orbital launches, Mars colonization, Earth transport, and Moon lander. Musk continues to promote a somewhat aggressive timeline for all of these plans. However, the Starship is far from completion. Even if time allows all the Starship to have been worked out, the company very much has to build the super heavy first stage that will assist the Starship to get out of the Earth's gravity. The first crew launch of Starship will most likely be the Lunar Orbit demo that the company has planned with the Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maezawa. The company in fact currently projects that the demo will happen in 2023, which is a very ambitious timeline. Thank you for watching one of our videos. While you're still here, go ahead and check out one of these two videos on your screen.